Um, well, yeah, thanks everyone. Um, I'm Nicholas. I'm representing Team Emoji. Uh, I was I had the pleasure of working with uh, Raja and Udbav, who both did an extraordinary job um, on this competition. So let's dive right into it. Um, so I am a machine learning engineer at Hugging Face. I'm based out of San Francisco. Raja is a data scientist at Ivanik. He's in Singapore. Udbhav is an uh, applied scientist at Amazon, and he's in India. And uh, the time zone for this call is much more favorable for me, so uh, I'll, I'll be doing most of the, of the talking. And we'd previously worked together in other competitions, and um, we have some mutual friends. So um, that's how we decided to work together. Um, so the task of this competition was to tell if a text had been written by uh, a human or written by an LLM. Uh, you know, ChatGPT came out a year ago, and I know it's a huge issue for uh, schools because it's so easy for students to just have it do all their work for them. Um, and then there's another issue of like falsely accusing students of cheating when they haven't cheated. So it's a very interesting problem to work on, and we were very excited to see how far we could push um, detection systems. And so the, the big overall summary of our approach is to try and have a very diverse set of data. We call it a data mix of human-generated and then LLM-generated text. and you know, we didn't really know what would be in the private uh, leaderboard data set, um, which is kind of realistic because you never know what students are going to do, what ch tricks they'll try to try and um, make it easier for them to do their write their essays. Um, but it's also somewhat like shooting in the dark for the competitors because, uh, in some ways, like the leaderboard score was the most validation you had for if you're going in the right direction. Um, and so it's very easy to potentially overfit to the uh, public leaderboard. And so, you know, in some ways, I think we're, we're lucky that the approach we used um, did even better on the private leaderboard. Um, and I think some of the techniques we used were uh, useful for having that um, robustness and, and ability to generalize. Um, and so, yes, we, we tried to create a wide variety of these essays, which I'll get into next. So for human texts, um, we did leverage the Persuade uh, corpus primarily. That was the largest source of uh, human written essays and probably the most similar to what was in the um, private set of, of human written essays. Um, but we also found some other public data sets. Um, the Ellipse Corpus, Wikipedia, Brown Corpus, like all of these come from a variety of different domains and um, even periods of time. I think the Brown Corpus is pretty old. Uh, well, pretty old, I mean, many decades ago. Um, and so these were all the ones that we used for um, human written texts. And then for the LLM generated ones, we tried to use a variety of both the proprietary and the open, open models. And so uh, OpenAI, Anthropic, Google, Cohere, all of their um, API models we uh, used to generate text. And then um, we also tried to use as many open source LLMs as possible. Um, so Llama, Falcon, Mistral, um, E5, uh, yeah. And there were some also existing data sets that were already made by uh, LLMs. And so, uh, yeah, there's plenty that were shared by other competitors. We also found the OutFox data set. Um, Ghostbuster also had a data set. Um, and, and OpenAI also had a, a GPT-2 output data set. So all of these were combined. Um, and then we, in addition to um, using open models in a zero-shot fashion, we also tried 
fine tuning them on the Persuade corpus. Um, and we tried a variety of techniques, such as giving it information about whether um, this person is an English language uh, learner, what grade they're in, um, what essay score it should be. Um, and the idea was that maybe we can um, create custom and, and diverse uh, generated essays. Uh, we also tried holding a topic out. And so we didn't want to like overfit too much on the essays. And so if, if the model had never seen a topic before, uh, maybe we'd have slightly different uh, text that's being generated. Um, and then the last one, last technique was uh, like a span-wise generation. And so uh, just so this was similar to what was done by Raja in a previous feedback prize um, competition. And so you can generate one span at a time, um, and the model's conditioned on the rest of the uh, essay. Um, in addition to how we trained it, we also did a variety of generation um, approaches. And so the, the most common ones, I think, are changing the value of like temperature and top K and top P. Uh, but then we use some of the less common ones. So we used uh, contrastive search. Uh, we used the guidance scale parameter, logical, uh, locally typical sampling, and suppressed, to suppressed tokens. Um, and yeah, sometimes we gave it a source text. Sometimes we didn't give it a source text. And um, I guess the last one was sometimes we gave it a complete essay and we ask it to rewrite it, rephrase it, uh, occasionally masking out uh, words in the essay. And then after generation, we also experimented with data augmentation approaches. Um, so sometimes we corrected spelling. Sometimes we introduced errors by um, deleting characters, swapping characters. Um, and we had read papers that talked about, you know, some detection systems are very susceptible to attacks based on very minor changes like character attacks or things like that. So we're trying to make it more robust to that sort of um, possibility. And so altogether, I think our data. Um, you know, I can't remember actually. I think we had was it 150,000 or so samples um, altogether. Um, I think I think that was how much it was. Maybe it was 50,000. I can't quite remember, but on that order of magnitude. Um, in terms of modeling, uh, most of it's pretty straightforward. Um, we were able to get the best results by just using uh, sequence classification using Mistral 7B, and so we used. Um, LoRa for that, and we added the LoRa configuration there, nothing too unusual. We also got pretty good results by just doing sequence classification with uh, dbert to large. Um, we also tried a few different options of modeling where we would train a model entirely in the submission. So we had to use a pretty small model there. Uh, first train it with mask language modeling, and then um, fine tuning it on the data mix. And the idea was that uh, we wanted to understand the language that's used in that private set. So um, the only way to do that is to train it from scratch on that data. Uh, we also tried a ranking loss approach. Uh, and then we also did um, used an approach called Ghostbuster, which uses the scores from two LLMs. And so we used a llama model and then a tiny llama model. Um, and then finally, we threw in um, Amit's idea of the unsupervised approach. Um, so out of all of this, like the data was probably the most important aspect. Um, even our best results were with an ensemble of all of those approaches, but even a single model did very well trained on this data. Um, and out of all of the data generation approaches, I think the contrastive search decoding was perhaps the most impactful. Um, and then we, we did some 
some missions with the uh, TF-IDF approaches, but um, overall, um, I think the LLMs and transformers are more robust to that. And so, yeah, with with one model, um, you know, sequence classification with Mistral 7B, we we're able to get up to 984. Um, and yeah, I'm out of time. So thank you everyone for your uh, attention.